Hey there, friends. Meteorologist Shane Smith here with you. It is Tuesday, February 9th, 2021, and uh, it's been a while since I've done a vlog, but I thought uh, tonight may be a good time to dust off the old vlog and uh, talk a little bit about the upcoming ice storm. It was all the buzz around town today, and I uh, figured hey, I might throw my two cents uh, in the mix to let you know what I think is going to happen. So let's get right to it. Um, you can see right now on the surface map, there's an area of low pressure developing down along the Arkansas-Louisiana border. And this area of low pressure is riding along an Arctic cold front, uh, which is parked just off to our south. We've got a really strong divide uh, between Arctic air off to our northwest and some milder air off to the southeast. You can see that on the current temperature map. You know, we're generally into the 30s uh, right now across the bluegrass. But off to the northwest, up into the Great Plains, how about five below zero right now in Bismarck, North Dakota? Yeah, that's some serious heavy-duty cold. And it's that cold which is dipping down to the southeast into the Ohio River Valley, which is going to help fuel the potential for the freezing rain as we go from Wednesday night into Thursday. In fact, winter storm uh, warnings off to our northeast for the counties highlighted in pink in West Virginia. Here in eastern Kentucky, we have an ice storm warning, our first one since 2013, eight years. In fact, it was uh, January of 2013. We had our last ice storm warning uh, in eastern Kentucky. Now, with an ice storm warning, that means our friends over at the National Weather Service are expecting at least a quarter inch of freezing rain uh, accretion or accumulation. So that is some significant freezing rain that could cause widespread issues across eastern Kentucky and even south central Kentucky. You see that a uh, warning extends all the way across the southern half of the bluegrass back into the Boot Hill, Missouri, and northeast Arkansas, back town towards uh, Jonesboro uh, region down there. Here's what I'm expecting to go down as we go into your Wednesday. I think we start the morning off with some scattered showers, uh, potentially. Probably going to be just plain Jane rain at that point for southern Kentucky, up into central Kentucky along the I-64 corridor, either a wintry mix or snow and sleet. And that action will continue throughout the day. You can see there we're at noon, scattered rain, pretty much um, from a line from Jackson uh, over to Mount Vernon, uh, back over towards Danville, over towards Campbellsville, and to the south. North of that, you're starting to get into wintry mix between, uh, let's say, the southern end of Madison County up towards Lexington and I-64. And then north of Lexington, they're dealing with mainly snow. Now we take you on into the afternoon. A little bit of warm air surges into southern Kentucky that pushes the freezing line farther to the north. So we're dealing with rain in southern Kentucky, a wintry mix in central Kentucky, and then some snow in far northern Kentucky. We're talking uh, Dry Ridge, Florence, up to the north. Um, this is 6 o'clock Wednesday evening. You can see there's a heavy pocket of wintry mix uh, stretching from Paducah to E-Town to Lexington over to Ashland, Huntington, West Virginia. In southern Kentucky, we're dealing with rain at that point. Far northern Kentucky, snow. Then the cold air starts fighting back as the sun sets tomorrow evening and starts pushing back down to the south. And you see we go towards midnight. The freezing line is now back down uh, from around Prestonsburg, back over towards uh, Salyersville, west over into Wolf County, in northern part of Lee and Owsley County, uh, back over towards Mount Vernon extending off to the west and southwest towards Bowling Green. And that line will continue to dip southeast through the overnight. I think after midnight, most of eastern Kentucky should begin to become cold enough for it to be all freezing rain. And we go into the morning commute on Thursday, heavy freezing rain moves into the region and lingers off and on throughout the entire day on Thursday and should begin to clear out during Thursday evening, we'll say around 6, 7 p.m. Uh, how much can we see? That is the big question 
And there are still a lot of questions with this. So let's kind of take you down model by model how much freezing rain is potentially uh, on the board. It looks like uh, from this run of the GFS, this is the afternoon run, uh, Somerset, about a third of an inch, about a quarter of an inch to a third of an inch in Laurel County. Friends over in Mount Vernon, three tenths of an inch, uh, back over towards uh, Jackson, third of an inch. So pretty much most of eastern Kentucky uh, in a third of an inch of freezing rain from the GFS. It's one of the models on the lower end. Uh, the afternoon run of the European model was very aggressive with the freezing rain. In fact, uh, from London east along the Howe Rogers Parkway and Highway 80, uh, we're talking around an inch in this area of dark blue. That is some significant freezing rain. Uh, the Canadian model was showing about two-thirds an inch. Um, the regional Canadian model was showing a little bit more than that, uh, around three-quarters of an inch for this area in the darker purple. And the latest run of the NAM model is pushing the heavier freezing rain. In fact, showing some locations over an inch and a half. We do not want that to happen. Um, that would be bad. From just north of Pikeville, back towards Prestonsburg, over towards Sayersville, uh, through Wolf County, southern Morgan County, Lee Owsley County, back over towards, uh, say, Richmond, down to Mount Vernon, over to Danville, uh, back west towards Bowling Green, Campbellsville and Columbia. Now, that's the latest run of the NAM. Earlier runs had this a little bit farther south, uh, and there was a pretty strong southern trend going. In fact, we take you all the way back to the overnight run. Notice how the heavier band has intensified and pushed farther south. It's just with this last run that it's shifted a little bit to the north. 20 miles is going to make a world of difference with this system. If it goes farther north, you get more rain, maybe a little less freezing rain. Um, if it goes further south, you get into more sleet and snow. So it depends on where this looks like about 40 to 50 mile wide band of heavy frozen precipitation is going to set up. And right now our friends at the Weather Prediction Center, uh, this is uh, the precipitation forecasting branch of the National Weather Service's national office. Uh, they have a good chunk of central Kentucky and at least an 80% chance of freezing rain over the next two days. And when you kick that up to a quarter inch, it's at least a 60% chance. Um, so right now, it looks like the best chances um, are kind of north of the Howe Rogers Parkway and Highway 80. So, my thoughts on the coming system. Um, I think that a good chunk of southern Kentucky is in for significant uh, freezing rain. I would say anywhere from the Howe Rogers Parkway, Cumberland Parkway, Highway 80, and points to the north all the way up to I-64 need to be ready for the potential of significant freezing rain. We're talking anywhere from a quarter of an inch up to an inch. Um, somewhere in that range, there's going to be about a 50 mile wide band of intense, heavy frozen precipitation that is going to cause widespread power outages and make for impossible travel conditions. Where that sets up, we still got a little time to figure out, but that's kind of the area I'm targeting. Uh, for friends down along the Tennessee Virginia border, let's say uh, Williamsburg, back over to Monticello uh, eastward. Barberville, Harlan, Pineville, the chances of freezing rain not quite as significant uh, there. I think the warm air is going to win out along the Kentucky, Tennessee, and uh, Virginia border, at least over towards Harlan County. I think once you get into Letcher County and points east, the cold air may win back out in the higher elevations. It's going to be really, really tricky there. That's probably the trickiest area of the forecast uh, is in the southeastern Cumberland Valley getting into the uh, foothills and the mountains around Pine Mountain, Black Mountain. That's where I think things get really, really tricky trying to forecast how these temperature profiles uh, play out. So for places, Harlan, Middlesboro, uh, back over to Pineville, maybe Barberville and Williamsburg, not quite as bad in the freezing rain department, although Barberville and Williamsburg 
uh, west over towards Monticello. I think you guys see at least some freezing rain uh, and some slick spots to develop. The question is just how far south does that frozen precipitation uh, push on Thursday? And we're going to have to keep a really close eye on those temperatures. This is going to be what we end up calling a now casting event where we are literally watching weather observations as they come in, tracking where the freezing line sets up and just how much cold air is pouring in. Um, I can tell you this, friends, as far as impacts go, this is going to be a high impact event for any of those counties highlighting the purple in that ice storm warning. Um, I would be prepared to deal with power outages uh, up to a couple of days, some of the remote, more remote areas uh, in those counties, maybe over a week if there is significant ice. We're talking over a quarter to a half inch of ice accumulation. Um, so that means you need to have an alternate heat source available, um, but just make sure to uh, properly um, aerate the room. Don't let all those fumes build up. Bring a little fresh air in every now and then. Uh, you don't want poisonous fumes to build up off like a propane or kerosene heater. Um, also make sure to keep those heaters um, isolated and away from flammable materials um, as you can get house fires um, very easy with portable heaters that are not placed and set up correctly. Uh, I would have some non-perishable food uh, that would be easy to make and wouldn't necessarily require a heat source. Uh, if you've got an outdoor grill, don't bring it in, but maybe do, doing a little cooking outdoors if the power goes out and you don't have uh, gas to cook on if you cook on electric and I'm an electric cooker so I <laughs> got the old propane tank ready to go uh, in case I need it to go grilling outside uh, in case we lose power um, just so just have a couple of days of provisions the worst of it is going to hit on Thursday I think for most of southern Kentucky tomorrow's not too bad get north of Mount Vernon north of Jackson north of Prestonsburg uh, that could be a little bit dicey tomorrow, especially into the afternoon. Um, so Southern Kentucky, this is really more of a Thursday thing. Get into Central Kentucky, this starts tomorrow uh, during the day on Wednesday. So I'm going to just tell you, uh, keep an eye on your favorite sources of weather information. Um, to see what's out there, make good informed decisions. And uh, if you like this video, Hit the like button, consider sharing it, maybe subscribe, and uh, if we get enough likes, uh, I might make this a more regular occurrence. So I may try to post another one of these tomorrow evening to give you a little update. Hope uh, everyone makes it through this all right, and if uh, you have any questions about the forecast, uh, be sure to hit me up on Twitter, at Shane Smith Media, and I'll try to answer those the best I can. All right, take care.